L'un des thèmes de la soirée sera sans aucun doute celui de la liberté. Five years ago, the late Canadian ambassador to Iran, Kenneth Taylor, delivered a lecture here at Concordia. Ambassador Taylor was a touchstone of democratic values, and he risked his own safety and freedom for others during the 1979 Iran hostage crisis. At that time, the Iranian monarchy was overthrown. To quote Ambassador Taylor, there was celebration and the sense of freedom. Then, from there, came the terror. We can draw several parallel to this evening's keynote speaker, Mohammed Fahmy. Last story I remember covering before going to prison was the branding of the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Three days later, security forces walked in in the Marriott Hotel where we were working. I opened the door, officers barge in, they have their camera rolling, photographers taking photos, and immediately I was framed as a terrorist. I was, I was wondering, why am I here? And the guy was like, you are a member of a terrorist organization, you have fabricated news, you are operating without licenses. I was like, wow, when did this happen? I mean, I ended up basically um, in Scorpion prison. And this prison is probably one of, I mean, as a reporter, I've covered, I've been to prisons in the Middle East. This is the nastiest prison I've ever seen or heard of. And my neighbors uh, <laughs> were members of Al-Qaeda, ISIS fighters, sympathizers, members of the Muslim Brotherhood presidential team and some of the officials, and including the head of the Muslim Brotherhood as well. So after 411 days, I was sentenced to seven years. And if you see the video on YouTube, it took about four or five cops to get me out of the cage. I was so devastated. I walked into that cage thinking I'm going to be freed. And they were pulling me away and I'm clinging on the, on, on, the, on the bars. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm going to spend seven years in this place with these crazy people. I held my composure until that specific moment when I was like, okay, now I need to change the strategy. Using the social media is so important. Um, you know, we had the free AJ staff, for example, hashtag. In the first three months, we had 140 million participants. By the time I was out of prison, there was more than 5 billion participants. And that really bothers these very fragile governments. Thankfully, I was pardoned this day, last year, and it was such a shock. But for me, that, that was just the beginning. I feel that, and I believe, that this is an unprecedented attack on journalism that we're witnessing now. Um, many governments are using vague terrorism laws to clamp down on journalists and human rights defenders. We're seeing them use these laws as a license to kill and license to imprison journalists. You know, governments and extremist groups are leaving no neutral ground for us to operate on the ground. During my time in prison, I was thinking of ways to improve protection of Canadians imprisoned abroad or threatened of being in prison. Because it doesn't just happen to journalists and medics on the front line. A, a student, a couple on a honeymoon, could be branded tomorrow morning as a spy. And we're seeing this with Ms. Huma Hutfar. We're seeing this with Saeed Malikpour. He's a permanent resident Canadian who's detained in Iran for coding computer, computer coding. We need a mechanism that will obligate the prime minister to call the Egyptian president or other president and say, hey, listen, this guy is no terrorist, get him out of prison. So we're, I'm continuing to promote that, and I invite you to go read the Protection Charter. It's on the Fahmi Foundation. Thank you.